I want to take a look at the remainder theorem and we're also going to look at example 13.8 as an application of the remainder theorem. Now we're not going to be going into the proof or the, uh, the reason why the remainder theorem works the way that it does. Uh, we're going to use the example as a means for us to see evidence that it actually works. So we're going to show that it works, um, but we're not going to go into all the, the deep, rich details as to why it works the way that it does. So it says, let f be a polynomial function and let c be a real number. So these are things that we have to be provided with in the problem. We have to have a function and we also have to have a real number. If we take f of x and it is divided by x minus c. So what that is saying is take f of x and divide it by x minus c. So in other words, we're creating a division problem. f of x is going to represent your dividend. And then whatever the real number is, you're going to turn that into a divisor by making it x minus that real number. Once you go through your division process, then the remainder represents f of c. f of c is the function value when x is equal to c. Or when we say function value, you can also think of this as the y value that goes with x being c. So we have an example here to help us illustrate how this works it says use the remainder theorem to find the indicated function value check your answer with direct substitution so when I think remainder theorem I think I have to set up a division which is going to be f of x divided by x minus c now that means I have to be provided with a function f of x and I also have to be provided with a uh, real number C. I definitely have a equation that I can use for f of x. That is going to be the 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. We have that. But then I've got to figure out what is my divisor going to look like? x minus C. We've got to come up with that real number. Well, the real number is given to us. It's given to us right here with what we're supposed to be calculating. We're the indicated function value is f of 3. So that means that the real number that we're supposed to be using is c. That's 3. So our divisor is going to be x minus 3. So that's the division problem that we're supposed to be doing. And then whatever the remainder is from that division, that is supposed to represent the function value f of 3. Since our division is nice enough uh, in terms of its divisor, we are going to be allowed to use synthetic division to do this. So we're going to set up the synthetic division for negative 3, positive 3, negative 1 we're going to use positive 3 as the representative for the divisor bring down the lead coefficient of 4 and let's begin 3 times 4 to get 12 negative 3 plus 12 to get 9 3 times 9 to get 27 27 times uh, well excuse me 27 plus 3 to get 30 3 times 30 gives us 90 and then negative 1 plus 90 is 89 and that is the remainder so the purpose of using synthetic division here was not to do the complete division the purpose was just to get um, the remainder that was it that was the only reason why we did the synthetic division so what this is claiming then is Therefore, f 
of 3 is equal to 89. And that is by the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem is what allows us to be able to take the remainder from that very particular division problem and use that as the answer to our uh, function value. Now it also says here, check your answer with direct substitution. So let's do that. So with direct substitution, call this the check, um, all we have to do is plug in 3 for all the x's in the original equation. So the check is going to look like this. f of 3 will be 4 times 3 cubed minus 3 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 minus 1, which is going to result in 108 minus 27 plus 9 minus 1. And then all of that is going to add up to be 89, which is the exact same answer that we have from the remainder theorem. So the direct substitution is what we've been doing the entire semester long for finding function values. And it's a perfectly fine way of doing it. Um, but if you have to repeat the process of finding function values over and over again using the exact same equation, um, that can be a little time consuming. Synthetic division allows you to be able to get through that process much faster and synthetic division doesn't require you to have to deal with the exponents. All you have to do with the synthetic division is just multiply and add. But if you do direct substitution, you gotta be careful to pay attention to what the exponents are saying. So it's just a different perspective on how to be able to do uh, function evaluation.